Morning everyone, Tammy Treyer, treyerwilderness.com. As you can see above me, it is a beautiful, clear, sunny day here in northern Idaho. Uh, we've been up early trying to beat the heat, so a lot has been accomplished already today. I hope you guys are all doing well. I am going to, good morning Miss Tammy, spin this around and share with you a little bit of what the mountain man is working on. Okay. Oh, this is perfect. He's got a red hot piece of steel that he's working on. Yes, it is a beautiful day here, and good morning to you too, Tammy. And he is, he's been out here for a while. He made hinges for our doors, and he is now working on the hardware and the handles and latches. So, this is so awesome. I could just stand here all day and watch him do this stuff. It's just amazing watching him turn things into amazing pieces of art and often from just a piece of junk, scrap steel. Precision eye, gotta love it. And I'll just show you a little bit of how he comes up with this stuff. Probably can't hear too good about that board I'm not sure. We'll find out. Can you hear me good? In here? I don't know. We'll find out. But that was his handiwork this morning, his drawings that will turn these pieces into his handiwork. So we will be sure to show you the finished products then. Yeah, it's a hot job. It's really warm in here. Yeah. Make sure you're drinking. <laughs> good morning, Shelly. Good morning, Lori. I was just. Than I. <laughs> Tammy said she could hear just fine. He is in there working on the hardware. Oh, right here are actually the hinges that he forged this morning. Is that not amazing? Oop. Okay, it's yelling at me for turning my phone. Okay, I'm not going to be out here long. I want to show you some stuff. I got my dinner on out here. I am conserving propane. We are running low on propane and don't have the funds to replenish. So out there on my solar kitchen stand is my sun oven, which is cooking a very nice sized elk roast today. So dinner is cooking and mommy cat is doing well. She's getting into trouble just about. <laughs> Mountain Man is busy working on some of the other projects, but I wanted to show you what he has done since we visited last. And we might hit a dead spot. I'll just, hopefully you can hear me and we'll switch to the inside. But this is now what it looks like when you enter our home. It was pretty disheveled and full of stuff. He has cleaned it up, put new flooring in, done the walls finished the walls with the same um, look of spackle, uh, not spackle, but uh, oh, just totally left me, um, plaster. And then his door that he built and the hinges, he is working on still framing, finishing framing that out. But this certainly looks inside there we go okay I was probably unavailable for a little bit there yep I came in the house so when I came up the stairs I lose there's a like dead spot were you able to see the downstairs and the mountain man's handiwork down there let me know that and how are you all doing today I am drinking some Essiac tea well I've got Essiac tea herbal coffee wild child well it's actually blueberry wild child and nettle tea um, nettle is really good for allergies and the cottonwoods have let loose and i am having some really uh, great struggles with my sinuses right now but i think there's more to it than that which i'll explain in a minute 
Um, can you hear me for starters? Because I know you lost me. I just want to make sure you're hearing me. So if you can give me some hearts or thumbs up or let me know, that would be good. Whew, I'm warm. I actually just got off the exercise bike. Um, directly before I hit record, um, I rode 10 miles on there. I walked two miles on the lane and I did 10 minutes of yoga this morning. So I'm doing a lot of self care right now, which is really feels great. And I encourage you guys to do the same. Saw the floor and the beautiful door. Okay, good. I never know quite where that dead spot starts and ends. Um, okay, good. Shelly says, yes, saw his handiwork. Just finished my smoothie. Good deal. Your smoothies, I am out of hemp hearts and I am dying to get some more and my, all of my organic nuts are gone too, so I need to get some of those. Those are my favorites for smoothies, so when Shelly's telling me she's got her smoothie, I can just taste it because she makes good ones. Um, doing self-care is really important and today's topic is food on the homestead but I will expand on that too to your herbal side of things too herbal gardens um, herbal pantries you guys have seen my herbal pantry before um, keeping those things stocked is really important to me um, being able to take care of ourselves is important to me also it's good you can't smell me today and I don't <laughs> that's a funny thing to say isn't it um, I think the mountain man wishes that he couldn't because I put eucalyptus all over my face, all on my sinuses and down my neck. And I also put tea tree oil on, uh, on my nose. As I told you guys, I've been on a healing regimen here. I am retraining my brain and that pain that was in my legs since September had finally gone away. Well, it's back again. And so are other oddities and I, I do believe that I have pinpointed what it's from and I believe it's that the silicone the silicone is in my body and it does come out of my skin I do a needle soak which is actually sticky and it pulls it out um, I don't advise putting your hair in it even though they say to soak your head as well I did that a couple times and I don't do that too often anymore because I can't get my hand through it for about four days um, even with using lemon juice and all kinds of other great things, it doesn't come out. So, but that pulls the silicone out of my system. When I sweat, when I detox, that silicone pushes too. And this is a good thing. Um, it's a little creepy. It's like having shards of glass coming out of your skin. And I have certain areas where um, it seems to be abundant. So, unfortunately, that's my face. And my nose is one of those areas and I've always had struggles with my sinuses through this illness and I believe it is because the silicone is in my sinuses that was where my to the toxins kind of hung out I had great problems here and up in here and now that I've healed those areas I'm finding I have others you know so you kind of in detoxing and healing it's a progressive journey. You heal one thing and then once that is healed, you realize there's another area that needs to be worked on. So it's progressive and um, I'm really, really thankful that I'm in tune with my body and I'm able to read my body and also know what to do. So when all this time while I've been sick, the pain that I've had in my sinuses has, it, it has been facial and, and the top of my head and it is extreme at times, like to the point that I almost passed out already. Um, thankfully, it's not that bad right now. Um, but knowing what to do, knowing how to drain your face, I've talked about that before um, in draining your lymphatic system. Uh, when you are draining your lymphatic system in your face, you're also draining your sinuses. So when you do that for the first time, oftentimes people start gagging and choking. That's because your sinuses are finally letting go and they're draining. And I know that sounds really gross, but I'm going to put the links to the two videos. One is mine and then another, um, the other video is another woman's um, that does a very uh, in-depth ex explanation on how to drain your face and your sinuses. So if you have allergies, if you have um, sinus issues, if you, when you're starting to get sick, um, those are the kind of things that, this is the kind of thing you can do to get yourself great relief immediately. And then um, once you have that relief, you'll start to just heal right away. So it, it eliminates being sick. 
It also, um, once you start getting sick, it allows you to heal faster. Just good stuff to know. Good stuff to know. So melaleuca or tea tree oil is really good if you have acne or you're breaking out. And I do that on my face. Um, but at this point, I'm realizing what it is. So I've just got to do a treatment. And um, also the personal care and self-care that I do is helping me to detox these things from my body. In essence, then making me healthier. So the more you know the better off you are. Um, it even says that in the Bible. Knowledge is extremely important. When we are knowledgeable, we are better off. So, you know, I really challenge you guys to continue to delve into things that interest you. Um, herbal medicine, natural medicines, that has always interested me. So that's something that I'm very passionate about. But typically when you're really passionate about something too, that may be your gift, your, the thing that um, you need to step into. So I challenge you to keep diving deeper into these things. Tammy says, water here, going to make some red raspberry chia tea later. Oh, nice. I love chia seeds. I've got sun tea out on my back porch. I did a thing of the wild child, the blueberry wild child tea and nettle out there also that I'm going to um, sweeten for sweet tea. So the mountain man has something refreshing to drink when he comes in. So the SEC tea that I am drinking is actually a cancer fighter. That has in it burdock root, um, sheep sorrel is the other one, slippery elm bark, and the uh, turkey rhubarb root. Um, that is a cancer fighter. And I've mentioned to you guys before that I have a spot on my back that I am wanting to take care of naturally. I am starting to go to a um, raw diet for a while just um, to get my system back on track and to help me detox some of this while we have the heat of the summer going on. Um, so learning how to do these things, progressing in these things is just so helpful. Good morning, Sanford and Nikki. Um, also, for those of you with allergies, I did mention that nettle is really good. You can do a nettle tea with peppermint, and um, even uh, skull cap is another good thing to add to that um, that will give you relief. I also do um, quercetin and nettle capsules um, that are non GMO and organic, all natural um, supplements that are really good for allergies got rid of the Benadryl. Um, the Mountain Boy and I have always had allergies, but to be able to replace your over-the-counter meds with natural things is also extremely beneficial because you never know what you're getting in those things. And that's just the way we travel, the things that we venture into. So, okay. Now, the reason I wanted to talk about food today, good morning, Janet. We had a really good question um, presented to us. Um, when we moved from here, the question was, how are we going to handle our food situation? And I was curious about that um, and what they meant because uh, I didn't see or uh, I didn't, I didn't feel there would be a problem. So I was just curious what they were thinking. And um, she had a very, very uh, valid thought in things um, because she also prepares very heavily. And uh, I'm going to actually, sh bear with me one second here. How many of you are involved in natural health? I'd like to know, um, you know, those of you that are also interested in it and, and uh, are growing things of your own. I've had quite a few things growing in my garden. That's the other reason we're going to talk about food today, which I will explain in a minute. I just wanted to invite two people because I see they're not present. So give me one second. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. You know, chia seeds are extremely healthy. And did you know that if you are in a survival situation and you that's the only food you have in your pack, because keep in mind they're extremely light. What you can do is um, take a spoonful of those per day and you will have all the nutrients and in your system and they will sustain you for 24 hours with one tablespoon. Um, so it's pretty impressive the um, 
great foods that we have available to us. Chia seeds are so amazing and something that um, you can use in so many amazing ways. Um, you can eliminate eggs in your baking by using chia seeds. Um, I just, I use them in everything. Tammy says, I am trying to put our menu back on the healthier side. It's a hard thing to do. Our food is so expensive and um, in our remote locations, um, it can be really hard to locate organic and good quality foods, um, meats included. Um, you know, sometimes we take things for granted. You know, here where we are hunting, I don't have to worry about my meats being GM, uh, my, uh, with, riddled with GMOs. Um, and I'm sorry, there's messages popping up on my screen. And evidently today it's like sending my mind in a million different directions. Um, but the comment came across that many people are surrounded by cornfields and the deer and the animals that they are hunting are eating the corn. Corn is genetically modified, so therefore so is that meat. And we don't take that into consideration, some of us. Um, others of us that do take that into consideration, you know, we are limited in what we are able to find as far as quality foods. So, good morning, Charles. Good morning, Mona. So, the thing is, we need to be diligent in our efforts to find ourselves and our families good quality foods. Um, and what we need to always do is look out for ourselves and do the best we can do with what is available to us. Um, you know, we don't go out to eat. We don't go out to the movies. The Mountain Boy and I do uh, maybe twice a year because that's a Christmas present to him. But, you know, we, aren't, we don't leave the homestead much. So we're not spending on a lot of the things the average person spends on. And... Therefore, instead of spending our money on those avenues, our money goes towards our food. Our biggest expenditure for us is our food because we are very diligent and very uh, devoted to making sure what we are eating is organic and non-GMO foods. I have to. I have to. And the mountain man who doesn't have to prefers to because he feels so much better. And so does the mountain boy, which is really funny. Because for the longest time, I had a fight with them both. And um, now they're so on board, you know, it's really funny shopping with a mountain boy. He'll grab something and then realize that it's not one or the other or both. And so he puts it back. So it's pretty funny. And I'm, I'm grateful for that. That shows that my, my teaching has reached him, but also that he is aware of it based on how he feels. Um, Shelly says, I try to eat only what my kids used to call ingredients. <laughs> Very rarely do I buy processed. Exactly. Exactly. And I love that. And uh, Tammy says, meat, in our massive expe meats, meat is our massive expense. And I can't usually afford the good stuff. I know it has affected our health. We used to have grass-fed. Yeah. I mean, to purchase grass-fed, depending where you are, I mean, you're giving up an arm and a leg. That is why... We hunt the way we do. We hunt as a family. We hunt not for the size of the antlers or the rack. We hunt for the meat. And that meat needs to sustain us because we don't buy meats from the store. If we do, it is grass-fed and it is non-GMO um, organic meats. Uh, but we try to limit that expense. I mean, pretty much that kind of meat is, is a delicacy and a treat because it's also something other than deer or elk, sometimes moose. I'm hoping to put in for my moose tag this coming year, so that will be exciting. The mountain man got his in 2013. Uh, maybe the mountain boy will be able to put his in this year, so maybe we'll be able to hunt together. But uh, the elk and the moose and the, and the deer meat that we hunt here is just amazing, amazing meats. It is, it is untainted and um, you know, a lot of people don't like wild game because they say it's gamey, but it's all in how you cook it. And I would be happy to show you the way on that because uh, we save ourselves so much money uh, being able to hunt our own meats. Um, but in the event that you can't, and like Tammy said, um, you know, that's her biggest expense, we need to go for the best, that, the best options 
that we can afford and, and do the best we can. Because in, in the country, the way our food is, it's really hard, depending where you are in the country. That also plays a major role. So, you know, the most important thing we can do is do the best we can with what we've been given and what is around us. Um, and we will talk more about that. Um, Charles says, glad to hear from you. I'm home and good news. Was a virus load and they're keeping an eye on me. I'm so thankful. I eat canned goods the best I can do. Okay. Sorry, reading the screen. I know I'm scrunching my eyes, but it's hard to read the screen sometimes. These glasses mess with my head. I'm glad you're back. I am glad that was a virus. We will still continue praying for you. I know that was really scary, so awesome. Thank you for the update, Charles. Tammy says, I did find some grass-fed at the natural grocers for $3 a pound. I grabbed all I could. <laughs> I am, there's sun tea, tea out in the porch and that we can um, add ice cubes to. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, when you find deals like that, suck them up. You know, if you can. Um, and that's the thing to look for is when you can find those deals. Um, and Or if you know they do them regularly or at certain intervals, that's a great way to go about it. The other thing um, for your, as, as Shelly said, was the other ingredients. Um, there are places like Azure Standard. It's A-Z-U-R-E. Are you, are you progressing nicely? Yeah. You almost done out there? No. <laughs> I don't want you sweating to death on me. Um, Shelly mentioned with the other ingredients, Azure Standard is a great resource. It's A-Z-U-R-E standard.com. Now, Shelly, I don't know if that's available to you or not. I know it's in the States. Um, but there, are, there are, you can order directly from the company and have it shipped, which ends up being pretty costly. Um, or you can look around to see if there's a drop spot in your area. We are fortunate enough that there's a drop spot about 30, 40 minutes from us. And um, we take advantage of that. Uh, that is where I get all of my, a lot of my bulk ingredients. Um, we also have a chain here. Winco um, is able to get um, bulk organic non-GMO ingredients in for me. So I get a lot of my stuff there as well. So... We stock up, we try to keep about three years worth of food on hand at all times. We rotate that food and, and that is about where we are at right now. I restock every August because August is the time here where it's still safe to get um, in and out. It is safe to um, be able to get in on some of the specials that might be running. Um, out here we have stores that do bulk sales um, so that if you order in bulk you get cheaper prices. Um, Winco and the local grocery stores will order things in and you get a discount for ordering the larger quantities um, through them. Um, Azure Standard has good prices. So that is what we focus on and like Shelly said, she doesn't order or do a whole lot of process. Neither do we. Um, we do do uh, potato chips and um, nachos periodically. Um, but for the most part, everything that we are purchasing is a raw ingredient. Salt, sugar, um, all the different flours, all the different beans, all the different rices that we eat, and the different... Um, lentils and, and uh, the seeds, the raw seeds, the flax seeds, the chia seeds, the, the different nuts. Um, I do, uh, wow, I just went blank. I just totally went blank. I get a uh, bulk peanut butter and bulk uh, non-GMO nut milks that I keep on the shelf. Um, I also do coconut powder, so I have milk of some sort on hand. Uh, we do a lot of our oils. So we stock up on all those raw ingredients, um, as well as the um, spices and herbs and the herbals as well. Now, we, are, we, we were used to growing our own, but that has not been something we've been able to do. A dear friend of mine has brought in produce for me for the last couple years. But the farms have actually closed in her area, which really sucks. Um, but the small farms are. If the younger generations aren't taking them over, these farms are closing. So it's getting harder and harder to find produce if you're not growing your own. 
And this year, it's just not in our cards to be able to can whatever we can get our hands on. So the question to me was, how are you going to move all this food? And Or have you, you know, gotten down and dwindled down? So this is where we're at. I've got my canning shelves are about half full. And we have a local neighbor here who feeds his hogs and utilizes milk for the hogs. So he has a ton of milk crates. Hang on one second. Lay down. Old man's at it again, scratching on the floor. So those milk crates will come in really handy for me to pack up all of my canned goods and I will put a piece of cardboard on the bottom and cardboard in between them. Um, U-Haul actually carries um, moving materials. So there are, um, there's wrapping paper, there's uh, or packing paper, there's also um, dividers for inboxes. Um, I happen to have some of those because a friend moved a couple years ago and she gave me the excess knowing that we were going to be moving. So you can utilize those Okay, so you can um, utilize uh, those type of materials to be able to um, pack up your canning jars and your uh, different glass items. In my pantry, we have um, all glass, as you've seen, in all my antique jars. So that's another thing that's going to get packed up in those milk crates. And if we don't have enough milk crates, I'm also fortunate enough that the local store um, has some extremely heavy-duty boxes um, that we can also utilize. So let me see here. There's been a bunch of questions or comments coming across. Shelly says, we have a neighbor that sells beef. They cannot afford to be certified, but their meat is grass fed and no hormones can, and no hormones, you can taste the difference. Yes, for sure. It's amazing the difference of grass fed um, meats and none without the genetically modified garbage in it and hormones and everything else. I mean, it is just such a difference. Um, moving forward, we are hoping to raise our own. We were doing meat rabbits and our chickens, but we hope to expand that in the future. Yes, um, Tammy, for sure. Winco, you can contact them. They have that bulk area in the store. Um, they actually have people that are... Um, specifically in that area and you can call and talk to them um, they don't like it when you do this but in my mind and in my Evernote this just works I take photos of their tags because you know how everything has an item number on it and it has their price if you look underneath that it also has the bulk price the reason they don't want you taking pictures of those is because the prices change but at least gives me a ballpark idea. That's how I budget my food. Um, but I take pictures of the things that I get, and it has the number on it and the pricing on it, so I can call and find out. I can inquire what the food um, prices are at the time when I order them. Um, but yes, they will order all that, and I get my non-GMO, uh, gluten-free, organic oats from them. I get um, organic cane sugar. Uh, we get Himalayan sea salt. Um, I get a lot of my spices there. Um, I'm trying to think what else I... Oh, and um, my seeds, a lot of my seeds I can get there too. Um, so yes, always check into that. And don't be afraid to ask your grocery stores too if they can order in bulk. Um, because... They will often, like, we use um, Earth Balance. That was what I was trying to think of earlier. I do Earth Balance peanut butter and Earth Balance um, spread, which is a non-GMO, non-dairy spread. And um, they will order it in town here for me. It's a little more costly, but till I would have run another hour to go pick it up, it's just as easy to do it this way. We do stock up when we go an hour and get what we can, but when we run low or when we're out. So it's nice to know that you have a local resource for those things. So they are always happy to order in, and they give me a discount because I get the you know, the bulk amount. So it's a win-win. Um, but like I said, sometimes in your... Um, Local stores, it's going to be more costly, especially if you're in a small town. So we plan, try to plan our trips accordingly. 
Um, we go shopping maybe every three to six months. It just depends on our needs. Um, but August is the time where we start really planning to order our, our bulk food. So Jill's question was really good to me because we're not sure what we're going to do right now. Are we going to order now, you know, when it gets closer to the August time frame? If our house hasn't sold, are we going to order? Are we going to wait till later versus, you know, the question is all that weight. When you're moving, you've got to be careful with your weight. Now, this is another benefit to us. We have downsized so much that the weight of our, our food isn't going to be a problem because we don't have nearly as many belongings. So it won't be an issue moving. The thing is packing things up. Now this is the other thing that's really helpful for us is that our um, foods are all self-contained. Uh, we use Rubbermaid totes to store our large uh, 150 and 25 pound bags of foods that's our backup resources and then we have those same things in buckets food safe buckets we then fill our pantry up here the glass jars are filled from the buckets and it's a constant rotation of our food um, so everything is self-contained it would be a matter of moving our totes onto a trailer our buckets onto a trailer and then packaging very carefully our glass stuff um, but, you know, moving before, we didn't have all the food. Well, we did. We had, some, we had a fairly good stock of food to come out to go into the tent. Um, but things weren't as self-contained. We weren't thinking that way initially. We were thinking for camp, and we were thinking canned goods and things like that because we had to be careful of critters and everything else. But this is different. Um, this is all of our wholesome raw ingredients but because of how we live and because of how we store it and because of how we rotate it everything's pretty easy which makes it really really awesome um, so when we pack the trailer I told you before that we have the storage shed in a fashion that when we load the trailer the things that are unnecessary will go in first and be out of hindsight you know, they're, they're, they're totally out of the way, totally out of mind, out of sight, out of mind. Um, so those things won't matter. But the things that will matter, such as our clothing, our survival gear, our tools, um, our food, those things will be accessible. And um, my office equipment. So, you know, you plan these things. Um, now, if you're not moving like we are, it's good to start thinking about creating... A food storage that is self-contained that is rotational that um, you are able to stock up because when you stock up on bulk your prices are much greater um, uh, better and that you will be able to afford to purchase more you'll be able to stock up more and as you start doing that and as you are able to afford to do that you get yourself in a really good position um, I love having that food on hand. I don't ever have to stop and go, oh, shucks, I'm making this and I don't have that ingredient. I always have. And that is like such a really refreshing way for me to live. Um, when we talk preparedness, that's what I'm talking about. It enables me to be able to um, have peace. In, in my food supply, have peace in my day to day that that's not a panic. And, um, you know, a lot of people have to think of their, their weekly shopping list. That's not something that I have to be concerned with. Um, when we hunt our meats, it either goes in our freezer or it goes in canning jars on our shelf. So it's a matter of how you want to. Um, do things. Also, like uh, Tammy said, she bought that meat in bulk. You know, you can bring those things home. We have already gotten uh, really good deals on organic uh, grass-fed chicken. So we will come home and we will, we've got such abundance that, and it's packaged in weird ways. So what we will do is break that packaging up and package it so that it's convenient for us. So that if it's like this big, huge bag of chicken that we, or a flat of chicken, that we are breaking it up into meal-sized bags, or um, what we will do is can it. 
And uh, canning your meats is amazing. Everybody's a little bit panicked by that because they're afraid that it's a, it's a scary process and you'll end up with botulism and all this other stuff. But canning meats is very, very easy. Um, it's time consuming, but it's extremely easy. I did a lot of videos on our YouTube channel on canning venison, on canning chicken. Um, you can do in strips, you can do in chunks, you can uh, do ground. Um, we did 113 quarts of venison, um, gosh, I think that was, two, it was 2013 when the mountain man got his moose. We also had five buck back here because his dad hunted and his cousin was here. And so we had five buck and it was just amazing. But man, that was a lot of meat and a lot of time. But man, was I celebrating greatly, you know, through winter having that meat on hand. And it is nice to be able to pull that meat off the shelf and to be able to open that and either just start eating it or heat it or whatever you want to do. It makes meals easy and that's the other thing you want to consider. Charles says, we have a grass-fed beef here but I only have a freezer on top of the fridge. I'll ask for smaller amounts possibly. Yeah, um, and I'm sure at this point, Charles, you're not really wanting to do canning. So, you know, you can get smaller portions, ask them to pack it different. If it's a butcher shop, they're always willing to adjust things. Um, and the packaging, you could call ahead and let them know that you'd like to purchase so much. Could you package it this way? And that way, it's convenient for you to be able to cook and, and not have a lot of waste or to, you know, maybe have to keep using uh, ground beef over and over again until you use up what they've had it packaged in versus moving on to something different. So absolutely check with your butchers. And again, with a butcher, and that's one thing I miss here, we don't have butchers all over the place. Um, we're... Back home, we had butchers and farmers markets and farm stands all over the place. So depending where you are, that is a benefit. Um, it's just always important to make sure that they're not spraying their stuff and, and that you are getting you know, the grass-fed, non-GMO, no-hormone meats. But most likely today, a lot of the butchers are going in that direction. And like I said, if you can raise your own, that's even a greater benefit. Now, do you guys have tips and tricks that you would like to share on how you, <laughs> how you process or do your food storage or handle your food shopping and purchasing? Um, the best thing we can do is do the best we can with what we have. Now, like I said, we aren't able to um, grow the things we would like to right now. Right now, I just have teas growing. Um, I could put some tomato plants out, but being because we don't know what's happening from day to day, uh, what uh, we are going to focus on is when the time comes, restocking our raw ingredients and uh, focusing on freeze-dried foods. I prefer to stay away from aluminum cans. That makes it hard when you're not processing your own. Uh, to get fruits and vegetables for winter. So I prefer to do the freeze-dried. At some point moving forward, we would like to own a freeze-dryer so that we can do that because there's some great benefits to that. Just like I mentioned with the chia seeds, they're lightweight, they don't take up a lot of room, but they can sustain you greatly in a survival situation. Well, if you're in a survival situation, um, freeze-dried foods are very lightweight also, so it makes it very easy to pack um, the other thing is if you do a lot of outdoor stuff like we do where we're packing, you know, our, our packs around and camping for the night, doing a lot of hiking, those are things you can carry with you to easily snack on as they are or to rehydrate. Um, you can do a lot of great things with uh, oats and your different seeds and berries and uh, nuts. These are the types of things that really sustain you well, too, in those situations. So just something to think about. When we think about food, we think about from start to finish and the different experiences that we may run into happens. So I wanted to present that to you guys. And, and it was really uh, good of Jill to ask me that question. Um, if we did have all the stuff that I got rid of, 
and we'd have all the big things that I got rid of. Um, the food would be a concern because we, we have hundreds and hundreds of pounds of food. So it's important to think about those things. Um, if you do know that you're moving or you are planning to move, maybe working through your food stash that you have right now um, to lessen the amount and then once you get where you're going, restock. Um, that's a good way to handle things. Um, if you're suddenly in that situation, um, food is one of those things that I feel is an essential. Uh, so for me, I would get rid of the unessentials to make sure I could carry my, my essentials. Um, hope that makes sense. Okay, let me see here. I do a monthly menu plan and I do the majority of the shopping once a month. I have to get perishables weekly, but that is simple. I also order from Azure monthly for better prices on a few things. Awesome. Awesome. And, and you know what? Um, there is a lot to be said about food planning and menu planning. I have a lot of friends who do that. Um, I don't need to do that. I don't, let me, let me rephrase that. I could certainly do that. I choose not to because I have everything on hand and the other thing is that everything I do requires me to do it the old fashioned way. All I have is raw ingredients. The easy things I have are my canning jars. Um, the other thing we can keep in mind is with freeze dried foods, you can throw a meal in a jar, throw that jar into a pot and be able to make a quick meal. But most of my stuff is something that I just throw things together in the morning. I always have things on hand um, and I, <laughs> I kind of go by what I'm craving. <laughs> so the guys always laugh. Uh, Mama must have been craving and you know as they're eating similar things through the week or uh, something for a day. Um, but because we have everything on hand, it's just something that I just constantly kind of, I wing it, but I go by based on what I'm hungry for, how I'm feeling, that has also been part of it too over the last three years. Um, but having the raw ingredients makes it so easy and we are, we, we don't follow recipes a whole lot. We just kind of throw things together. So that's the way we do things. But meal planning can be very, make things in your kitchen very efficient and make your shopping very efficient. So if you are needing to do that, if you're working out of the house, if you have a tight schedule, I highly recommend if you struggle with um, food storage and food processing and also meal making, I highly, highly encourage you to get involved in your monthly planning, weekly planning, because it will help you get a better handle on things. Now, um, I gleam as much as I can. Yes, plums make great sauces and jams, plus you can make prunes by dehydrating. Awesome, absolutely. And um, those types of things, if you can make in abundance, go really, really well with meats. Those kind of sauces, applesauce, plum sauce, pear sauce, added to a roast, oh my gosh, amazing, absolutely amazing. So those are things that don't just go on toast or bread or um, fill cookies. You can do so, so much with those types of things. Um, Shelly also says you can never get too many apples, canning and dehydrating, absolutely. Apples are really good for the gut and also can apples can be used themselves for pectin. So apples on hand are a really, really good thing and they can be used for so many things. Okay, Tammy says, we have so many schedules to accommodate and so many people to feed I have to plan. Exactly, and, and I do most everything from scratch but need to have enough of things on hand. Yeah, and I can totally relate to that because when we first started out here, everybody wanted to come and see how we were living and visit so we had it was pretty funny we had like perpetual guests from the time we got into the house or shortly after we got in the house for about three years and it was really fun uh, a lot of mountain man's cousins came uh his friends came um it was it was a lot of fun but i had a lot of mouths to feed when we were working on the cabin um there's four I think we had eight or ten people 
that I was feeding on a daily basis. So I was constantly cooking at that time. I was making snacks. I was making um, snack bars. I was making desserts. I was making breads. I have pictures of like, I think I had made 20 breads the one day, both fruit and nut breads as well as, you know, sandwich breads. Um, so yes, I totally get that. And I get that too when you have busy schedules and you have people coming in and out at different times. Um, that's why I like the sun oven. The sun oven makes it so nice. It's like a slow cooker. Um, the Instapot, the other slow cookers that are on the market, those are great ways to take care of meals as well if you have a tight schedule to throw things in in the morning or throw things in at night. Now we can't do that because a slow cooker and an Instapot pulls a lot of power because it's using heat. But that's again why I like the sun oven. When the sun's out, I will throw that baby outside and cook a meal. So for one, my house isn't getting hot and this uh, duct work that he put in is amazing. You might be able to hear it running, but it feels like the, an air conditioner's running in here. It is absolutely amazing. So let me see here. I thought, okay, there. Charles said, I need to find a bulk food supplier that can mail me bulk items to store up maybe in Pennsylvania or Ohio. Uh, possibly, yeah, and I would look into Azure Standard too, Charles. There might be a spot there in your area, um, and if not, you can order through them. Um, I don't, I haven't looked in a long time to see how they're doing shipping. If you order so much after that, shipping's free, or if you pay shipping on everything, because you know when you're ordering bulk, that's expensive. Um, but definitely check into it because that is a great option. The other thing is, for those of you that are on the East Coast, there are a lot of Amish stores, Mennonite stores, um, and even out here, there may be some Mennonite stores available that will have a lot of bulk ingredients, and um, they eat very healthy, so I can pretty much assure you that most of the things that would be in their store will be uh, non-GMO and organic food. So check into that. Um, Layman's, I know uh, also Charles, is a store that carries some ingredients. They have mainly tools, but um, they have been starting to carry food items too, and I don't know if you can order that off their website, so check that out as well. Uh, let me see here, Tammy says, I love the crock pot, especially in the summer. I would probably use a sun oven, may have to look into one. They're so handy. Um, you know, they're, they're bigger items, uh, so they don't fold up, but I'll tell you what, I stash them and utilize them. I've used them in the summer already, or winter already. Um, as well. Um, you don't have sun as long, but you can still cook a meal. So uh, they are really, really useful. Let me see here. Uh, Shelly says, I use my crock pot at least once a week, if not more. Oh, I used to use my crock pot all the time. We enjoyed everything you made for dinner. Those pumpkin rolls were to die for. Ah, yes, the mountain man's pumpkin rolls. He loves those things. Whoopie pies are another one that is his favorite. Those, to have things on hand, you know, they say in a survival situation, if you have your comfort things, um, that's always uh, a key thing. And we've been in situations, many of you have been following us for a long time, where we went six and a half months without an income when I came back from my surgery. We never starved. And we always are able to make our comfort foods. Um, and that is, that is a huge thing. Um, food is one of our most important things, food and water. And that is why that is where our focus is. Our focus isn't on material things and objects as much as it is on our food supply and, and keeping up with that. So, but that's our mindset. But I do feel that the way things are in our country, it's also a good mindset to have. Food is something that once it's gone, it's gone. And if something were to happen in our country, food is going to be one of the first things that's going to disappear. And if you're not prepared to continue growing your own and, and such, you're going to be in a spot. So to have a reserve, to have a comfortable reserve is important. But also to have the seeds, non-GMO organic seeds on hand so that if something were to happen, you are able to continue
growing your own foods. This is the way we should be thinking. And that's why I thought this was a perfect conversation to have today. Um, because Jill got me thinking and I'm very thankful for that. So Jill, if you watch this on the replay, thank you, sweet friend. Okay, so Tammy says, Charles, you can look on Azure's site to see if there is a drop near you. The Amish we live by did a twice yearly big bulk order and let us go in on it. Might see if that would be available to you. Yeah, very awesome advice, very awesome advice. And thank you, Tammy, for mentioning that because yes, you can see on their site if there is a drop available to you. There are other food organizations across the country too. Um, Bountiful Baskets is something that is available here for us. Um, again, um, it's not always organic, but it might be the best that you have available to you. Um, so it's something to check into. And again, there they have drop spots and you can check to see if there is a spot near you. The other thing you can do is get online and search to see if there's bulk food, um, fresh food, um, vegetable organizations, as well as check with the churches that you belong to too. There is a church or the churches in your area. There is a church in our area who brings in, oh, I'm nuts, I can't think of the name of the organization. Probably not gonna be able to think of it right now, but if I do, I'll put it in the description below. Um, but there, the, a lot of the churches are starting to do things that are bringing in healthier foods too. Or if you are looking for something to bring into your area, that's something you can look into. Azure is always looking for new drop spots. So are some of these other organizations. If you're willing to take that on, that can tend to be a lot of work, but if you're really organized, um, it would enable you to get your food, you know, and be able to access it where it may not be available to you and open that up for other people. The other thing is you might find a couple of you in your area, um, like Tammy mentioned with the Amish, that want to go together. Um, if you don't have an Azure stop, maybe you want to all order together um, so often out of the year and split the shipping costs. So there's lots of things you can do. If you want to stock up on food, but a hundred pound bag is too much for you, you know, Charles, maybe you could go in with somebody else and purchase food and split it so that you have stock, they have stock, but you don't have that much of abundance that it becomes a waste. There's lots of things we can do, and that's where we can look out for one another. So many things you can do, but I highly recommend having a good, nutritious food supply. And as Tammy said, she's working towards it. Many of you are working towards it. We had to work towards it. You know, we didn't always, you know, I was on a gluten-free diet initially, um, and we were analyzing ingredients and seeking better foods, but then I got sick and I couldn't have anything with GMOs, and that really changed things. That really, really changed things for us. You know, we were healthy, but now we are really healthy. So it's a process, and it's a progress to get to these places. It's not something that you can do overnight. It's not something that you can go out and spend a couple thousand dollars on food right off the bat. But if you slowly work towards it and you budget it and you um, make a list of the things that you need, that's something else I have is a spreadsheet of all the ingredients I need, what I have on hand, what I need to order. Um, the guys know when they pull the last one off the shelf to come up and write it on my list so I know that I need to reorder it. Um, and actually it's not the last one, it's when we're getting down to two or three left on the shelf, that's when I need to know about it because we don't shop all the time. Charles says, great idea. I will ask my Mennonite friends. They buy Bach. I will ask them. Thank you all. Yeah, absolutely. And this is what I like about these um, live videos. We're all adding input. We all have different things available to us. We all do things different. This is where we can learn from each other. I am not a no, I don't know all. And I'm always loving being able to learn from you guys as well. So let me see what Shelly says. Shelly says, we have a farmer's market not far from us and they grow in a greenhouse. They will order stuff special for us also. Fantastic. Good morning, Kimberly. Yeah, what, and, and search for these places. You know, a lot, there are a lot of homesteads today that are branching out and trying to become a resource of food um, for the local community. They are trying to, they are trying to do just this. So seek 
Talk to your community. Talk to people. You know, maybe there's other people wanting the same thing you want to do. Um, one of the things that we had planned to do here was a root cellar and a greenhouse. We have a cold room downstairs, and, and that's equivalent to a root cellar, but we never got the root cellar in. The other thing is that um, the greenhouse got started, but we ended up taking the, the uh, frame down and um, it never came to fruition. But where we are located, it's almost essential to have a greenhouse because our seasons are so short and we are unable to grow things to their completion here um, without major effort. Tomatoes are a really hard one. Um, I get plenty of green tomatoes, but they never turn. So learning what you need to do in your environment to produce if you want to. Um, if there's local farms and, and older folks in your area that are growing these beautiful gardens, go talk to them and go inquire. Uh, learning from others, especially our elders, can be really uh, amazing stuff. We have a couple master gardeners in our area and we've gleaned some information from them and hope to glean even more in the future. But moving ahead, our desires are to get a greenhouse going, have a garden, but utilize that greenhouse all year long. Southern exposure on that greenhouse. Um, also utilizing the earth to give us the perfect environments. So there's a lot of things we can do. And also being able to raise our own meats. Um, we love pork, we love beef. Um, being able to raise it and sell it also to other families that are interested in doing the same thing, looking for good, healthy meat. So community is important. Community is really important, not just in this environment, but also in a in a day-to-day -day environment and being able to help one another um, to be able to sustain ourselves and uh, also helping each other by sharing our knowledge. So that is really, really important. And it's just knowledge. Knowledge is, is so important, like I was mentioning in the very beginning, knowing how to use herbs, knowing how to use them that are growing in your surroundings. I know that some of you grow your own herbs and some of your medicinal herbs. Um, I was growing sage and holy basil and uh, red clover and utilizing those in my garden. Uh, I had quite a bit of things growing. I'm just, those are the things that are coming to mind. But being able to grow those things too and having seeds for those things on hand is just as important. And knowing how to forage them from the wild. So keep that in mind. Also, uh, you know, there's lots of berries that are growing in the wild. We have tons and tons of raspberry bushes around out here. You know, they're growing in the wild, they're accessible. Um, we have dug some up and transplanted them. Something else to keep in mind is growing an orchard, planting some fruit trees, and utilizing those fruits, sharing those fruits. Um, we were talking last night, you know, about our needs and our desires, and, and um, one of those was having a 10 foot by 80 foot orchard so that we could have the varying trees we wanted to produce the things we need. And the other thing, guys, I can't express more than anything is having a plan and figuring out what works for you. Like Tammy said, she has to have a, a, a meal plan. I do better uh, sort of flying by the seat of my pants because of uh, going by how I feel and eating based on my needs. Um, the other thing is oftentimes I am eating something completely different than the rest of my family. Um, in this case, it's going to be coming that I'll be doing a raw and a juicing diet. So that in and of itself is, you know, going to be completely different than them because the man will not go without meat. So he's a meat and potato man and that's that. I won't change that. So, and I don't want to change that, but I do accommodate and I accommodate myself. And that can be hard, especially when you have a big family. Um, but when you do need to accommodate a diet for illness or um, even just uh, improving ourselves, um, that can be really tricky because that means you're cooking multiple meals. And that is a, a whole other subject. But what we need to do is just have a plan, do the best we can with what we have available to us, 
don't be afraid to ask around and ask if there's options. Our grocery stores, our um, butcher shops, our farmers markets, all those things, you know, if we're willing to ask, you might be surprised. That is one thing I learned early in life. I think I told, I know I told you guys about this before when I purchased the Victorian home that I lived in. It was loaded with antiques and I loved them all. It was so amazing. I love antiques. And I just, I told the guy at closing how much I really appreciated all the antiques in his home. And he said I, he wished that I would have said that sooner. He would have left them all behind. So... <laughs> It pays to say things. The worst thing people are going to say is, no, that's not an option, you know, and then you move on. But don't hesitate to ask. And um, working together with other people can be really beneficial. So definitely have a plan and take one step at a time. Uh, a good thing with food is to have a list of your needs, a list of the things that your family likes to eat. That's how I base my raw ingredients. I know what we like to have. Pumpkin roll is a must. So are whoopie pies. So I've got to have those types of ingredients on hand all the time. And um, that might mean that I need some freezer space for cream cheese. That might mean that I need extra um, lard or um, coconut oils on hand. You know, so i got to plan ahead. I need so many pounds of cocoa. I need so many pounds of organic cane sugar. I need so many pounds of coconut sugar. You get the idea. So make lists and figure out what you need. Put the cost next to them. Do a little research. That's why I go to Winco and I start taking pictures of their uh, display tags so I can kind of figure out what I'm looking at when I need to purchase in excessive bulk. And then I also compare from one store to the other wh where I'm getting my better deals. That all adds up, and it's extremely important to go that route. And thank you guys for adding your thoughts in this too, because it's, it's really important that we learn from one another. There's different things available. I didn't know about Azure Standard until I got out here. Um, and like I said, I was spoiled greatly by having all kinds of farmer's market and flea markets available to me back east and butcher shops. That is exactly why the first thing we did after we got in here was not walls interior, it was a smokehouse because we couldn't get the smoked meats that we enjoy the most. So it was um, being able to uh, create what we needed. So, okay. Now, I wanna, does anybody have questions or comments on that aspect of things? Because if not, I'm gonna jump on to the next topic. Okay, and just feel free. This is, there's a delay, so if you ask me a question, I will touch on it. Okay, um, I'm going to read. I love, I love how God works. Um, <laughs> I wasn't sure what I was going to do today. I never do. You know, it's usually right before I come on that God plants the seed. And he gives me things throughout the week and such. And I wasn't sure today, so I had two Evernotes started with ideas that have come to me. And what was really funny is when I looked at them, they were titled different, but it was the same content, the same thing in, in the note. So it made me chuckle because I got two stories out of the same message. And uh, we're going to cover that today. Obviously, that was pretty important. It impressed upon me that that was definitely what I was supposed to touch on today. So, that being said, um, it's titled Small Steps to a Great Destiny. And I titled um, this one, When the Holy Spirit Calls Us Out. The other one was titled Taking Baby Steps and Taking One Step at a Time. And I think you'll get both of those messages out of this message. Um, there's a couple things I also want to touch on, but I'm going to read this first. Um, this is Luke 5, 1 through 11. One day as Jesus was preaching on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, great crowds pressed in on him to listen to the word of God. He noticed two empty boats at the water's edge, for the fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. 
Stepping into one of the boats, Jesus asked Simon, its owner, to push it out into the water, so he sat in the boat and taught the crowds from there. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Now go out where it is deeper and let down your nets to catch some fish. Master, Simon replied, we worked hard all last night and didn't catch a thing, but if you say so, I'll let the nets down again. And this time their nets were so full of fish they began to, to tear. A shout for help brought their partners in the other boat, and soon both boats were filled with fish and on the verge of sinking. When Simon Peter realized what had happened, he fell to his knees before Jesus and said, O oh Lord, please leave me. I'm such a sinful man. For he was awestruck by the number of fish they had caught, as were the others with him. His partners, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, were also amazed. Jesus replied to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you'll be fishing for people. And soon, as they landed, they left everything and followed Jesus. Okay, so, small steps to a great destiny. God's simple request of us are oftentimes stepping stones to his greatest blessings. Although we may view these lesser events as unimportant, the Lord sees them as a big deal. The Apostle Peter is a wonderful example of a man who took small steps that led to a great destiny. When Jesus asked to be taken out in Peter's boat, the fishermen could have said no. After all, he'd put in a full night's work and was probably exhausted. But by taking this small step, Peter received a front row seat to hear the greatest teacher on earth, and he began a life-changing adventure. Although Jesus' first request was fairly ordinary, his next, next suggestion would challenge everything Peter knew to be logical. Heading into deep water at midday for the purpose of catching fish was ludicrous to this fishing expert. Sometimes the Lord asks us to do what seems unreasonable. We should remember that the Lord is not obligated to work within the realm of what's normal or logical. If Peter had refused this unusual request, he would have missed the biggest catch of his life, and I don't mean just the fish. This miracle opened Peter's eyes to catch sight of his Messiah. When he got out of that boat, the fish meant nothing to him because Jesus became his everything. The Lord isn't waiting for us to do some big, impressive task for him. He's simply calling us to obey him one small step at a time. Don't miss the greatest adventure God has for you. Even when his ways seem unreasonable, follow him faithfully and your destiny will unfold before your eyes. You know, guys, you have been following us all this time and you have seen some really awesome miracles. You have seen us follow God's will and have people walk away from us and turn their backs on us. And be upset with us because they didn't understand, they couldn't understand why we would go put our nets in the water in midday. They couldn't understand why we were doing something that we knew sounded absolutely insane. But we felt very strongly that we were called to do it. And we did it. And we were greatly blessed for it. And we have been blessed for it. And you know, I look back on our experiences here. You know, God called us to come 2,500 miles to a piece of property that we never saw and had never stepped foot on. And he called us to come here and we thought to set up an off-grid homestead. Created a website so that our family would know we weren't eaten by wolves and bears and here I am today, nine years later, on Facebook Live with you guys, sharing, sharing my heart, sharing what I feel God is leading me to share with you, teaching, teaching what I feel is important for us as individuals, as community, to look out for our families and make sure that we have enough food and that we have the survival skills to sustain ourselves no matter what happens. And you know, it's really awesome looking back at that. You know, when we came out here again, that was where we had a lot of people scratching their heads and thinking we were absolutely nuts. And that, you know, you're bringing your wife out to live in a canvas wall tent, we've heard. You know, what are you thinking? Are you thinking of her protection? Are you thinking of her well-being? You know, but it wasn't just him that wanted to come. We all wanted to come, and we all felt very led to come, and we saw the doors swinging open. We had people closest to us 
on their knees just in awe at how God was opening doors that it was crazy. It was really, really crazy. You know, they watched the miracles happen as we walked that journey out. So I know that being here had great purpose. I know that our chaos in our lives had great purpose. I know that me experiencing, you know, almost experiencing death through breast implant illness had purpose. I get messages every day of people suffering and that weren't diagnosed and that found my video and now understand what's wrong with them and are now seeking the help they need. Our medical system is failing, so God used me as a vessel. God diagnosed me and he's using me as a vessel to save lives. As we progress through this journey of the chaos of getting this house completed, we were gifted with a peace and a comfort that is like no other. And it was all through baby steps. This wasn't, you know, we, we have, it was all a process. And God nudges us in such unique and amazing ways through other people, through podcasts, through messages, through videos, through books. He uses all kinds of tools to progress us from one step to another. And I'm hoping that all of you can raise your hand right now because I'm telling you to have a plan with your food and many of you have a plan with your food and you're seeking better, um, a better future with your food. But when you look back, you can see how you progressed in it too and that you've come a long way. So you've got to look at that and you've got to see the baby steps that you are taking um, to get where you are. And life is going to be a continuous process of baby steps. But I want you to be willing to hear that still small voice and I want you to be willing to be nudged by the Holy Spirit and when he calls upon you and some of you may not understand what that feels like but a good example is when I'm really in tune and and or when the Holy Spirit is really calling me out I will be in positions where I need to completely stop what I'm doing and sit down and get a piece of paper and a pencil and just start writing. The Holy Spirit will unload on me and just provide me with all this information and, and he's feeding me, okay? But there's also situations where I, you get nudged to do something and he might call you out in a really uncomfortable situation and ask you to do something that is really out of your character. And I'm gonna explain something. I have one regret over the last couple years and I'd like to explain that to you. Good morning, Ashley. Um, we, we went last year to Montana to pick up a um, dirt bike for the mountain boy. He bought a dirt bike and he got a really awesome deal from this man. Um, he got a a dirt bike, a running dirt bike that only had a couple miles on it and he got a whole other dirt bike with the exception of the frame. All the pieces to build another dirt bike and he had gotten that um, really amazing price and we went to visit this man at his home and he shared what happened. He built these motorcycles on a regular basis and would sell them and the bike that the mountain boy bought, um, he had re-put back together and well, the reason there was one in parts was because he had built it and took it out for its ride and wasn't even three miles from his house and a deer ran out from him and he hit a tree head on. He wasn't going super fast but he was going fast enough that he is debilitated for the rest of his life. He has extremely bad back issues. and. Um, so that's why the mountain boy got the second bike because that was the bike that this fella had taken out and had damaged but it was still salvageable just the frame was bent well while we were there you know you could see this man was just in such pain and his life had changed he can't work and I really really felt the Holy Spirit come over me and nudging me to pray for this man. 
Well, I could see that the mountain man was really in tune with this guy too. We were all talking together and I didn't want to steal his thunder because I felt the way things were going that he was leading in that direction. Well, it ended up, he wasn't, he didn't. And we just ended up, you know, closing things up. The man had to go back in the house and we left. And to this day, in my heart, I hurt for not praying for that man. There was reason God wanted me to pray for that man. And there have been, there was a previous time that we were asked to do something. God had asked us to do something. And we chose, we, we talked to some spiritual counselors and, and they suggested that we, we did this, even though we were feeling like God was telling us not to. And we really paid the price for that because God really didn't want us to do that. And we suffered for that. So, and that was after this motorcycle situation. So what I have learned in my time and over time is that when we are nudged like that, there is great reason in it. And that is why this year when we were nudged by the Holy Spirit to do things, we did them and we lost people walking away from us and we had people angry with us, but you know what? We aren't serving them, we're serving God. As a believer in Christ and as a Christian, we are serving God. We are not on this planet to please people. We are here to please God. So when you are nudged by that Holy Spirit, I want to encourage you, even if it's something that's uncomfortable, to step up. And I, I was looking out for my man. I didn't want to steal his thunder, but God was nudging me. And I could have started, and if he took over, that would have been fine. But God was nudging me to pray for that man. I pray for that man every day since. But I wish I would have prayed for him that day. And you know, guys, we have the power to heal with our prayers. And I have to go every day. I wonder if that was what I was supposed to do that day. You know, so don't shoulda, coulda, woulda. When the Holy Spirit calls you, jump on it. Jump on it. Even if it's, you know, opening a door um, for an elderly person or taking a cart back for somebody in the, in the grocery store parking lot. Whatever it is you're nudged to do, God has purpose in all of it. We don't always know how we touch people. We don't always know how we change lives. But if you're nudged to do it, I can be certain that there's purpose in it, if not directly, soon. And even if you don't know the reason behind it, ever, it doesn't matter. There was a purpose in God nudging you to do that. And, and I think we all can um, say we understand what that feels like because the Holy Spirit also calls us out when we're about to do something that isn't good. So when you feel that feeling of knowing that you're about to do something that's not right and you're called out on it, that's also the Holy Spirit. So the more, the closer of a relationship you have with God, the more you will feel that. And the more you feel that, um, it's just an amazing thing. My walk with God is very tight, very close, and I, I feel his presence. I hear his voice. I see the things he's trying to show me. It's all done in all kinds of different ways. Um, so I want you to be attentive to that. And I want to share something with you today, and then I'm going to end things. Um, I felt nudged on Sunday to ask a question on our Facebook page. I did, and I, I asked very clearly that um, what I was asking um, was bold, but I wanted people to please honor and respect each other, um, but I wanted people's honest answers. And I guarded it because I didn't want people to feel like they were under attack. I wanted a place where people could freely answer my question. And 99% of the people honored that. Um, and I was very grateful. But I was in some ways saddened by the answers that I, I received with this question, but I kind of expected them also. And 
What I asked people is what they thought when they heard the word Christian. And, you know, there's a lot of people out there that are hurting as a result of people that refer to themselves as Christians. And, you know, the one person said that they don't even mention that word anymore. They prefer to use the word believer in Christ. And it saddens me that we have to be careful, you know, and, and not use that word freely. But it, it is... It is a truth in our country that um, both churches and Christians, you know, have have given the whole a bad name. And and you know, sadly, you have that in everything. You know, um, we all have free will. None of us are perfect. We are going to screw up. But I want to call us out today for those of us that do refer to ourselves as Christians or believers in Christ. I want to call us out today to think about our actions, our words, and if, if you truly value being a believer in Christ and you value being a Christian, Focus on doing it wholeheartedly. Like I said, I am not perfect either. I screw up. I make mistakes. But what I try to do when I make a mistake is I try to own it. And I, I try to correct it. And that may mean apologizing. That may mean, you know, owning what I did incorrectly and expressing that. But trying on a day-to-day -day basis to be the best that I can be today. So, and to be better than I was yesterday. And at the same time, if I have made a mistake, to own it and to start anew the next day with a new beginning and refocusing on the same thing, being better than I was the day before and focusing on bettering myself. What I saw a lot of was people hurt by the church, people hurt by another Christian or somebody that's so called, as they say, called themselves a Christian. You know, um, there's a lot of people that go to church and, and play the role on Sunday, but as soon as they leave the church, they're not thinking about what was just spoken in the walls and they act differently. And, you know, people are watching, all of us. You know, they're looking at us to be leaders, to walk upright. You know, um, being a believer in Christ and being a Christian does not mean that we are better than anybody. It means that we know where we're going um, and what our eternity will be like. It means that we have somebody that loves us wholeheartedly and that gave up his life for our ours and our sins so you know being a Christian doesn't make us some big powerful hoity-toity special person compared to anybody else but we are called to stand upright and we are called to walk like Jesus did and I just want to remind you that that's what we are called to do. And that when you are going through your day to day and you catch yourself doing something that you don't feel is appropriate in that, with that being said, to set it right or to make a change. We are able to positively change things daily. It's a baby step. We can continuously make steps to change ourselves, to better ourselves. And, you know, seeing the answers to that question, you know, like I said, I wasn't surprised. I know there's a lot of hurting people. I've been hurt by the church. I've been hurt by Christians. But I haven't allowed that to jade me. However, there are other people new in the walk. And I was new in the walk when I was. But the Holy Spirit has always been very strong in me, and I'm thankful for that. I could have turned and walked away. 
I chose not to. But there are other people that are hurt and, and they do walk. Um, I had a really nice, nice conversation with one of our community members who left the church because of things and is a pagan and is um, uh, practicing another religion. And, um, you know, when we hurt people, everybody handles hurts differently. And um, we're also quick to judge and to um, confront people on their mistakes, but we're not willing always to see our own. And that goes to pulling the log out of our own eye. And what we are called to do more is to love, you know, with people that are, um, you know, celebrate, uh, uh, ex practicing another religion, um, for those that choose to be gay or lesbian, you know, I am not called to like their sin, but I am called to love them. And, you know, to be a light to people, other people, um, sometimes, you know, our expression of love is what will help them to see that we are a true believer of Christ and that we are a Christian. You know, we need to be able to, our actions need to speak louder than our words. We need to walk it and talk it. And like I said, we are all flawed. We all sin in one way or another. So I just want to call you out today, those of you that are believers in Christ and, and refer to yourself as a Christian, to evaluate your day-to-day -day activities and evaluate it as to whether that is something that Jesus would do. It's a, it's a great gauge. You know, if it's not something that Jesus would have done, then we shouldn't be doing it either. And I can pretty much guarantee you that the Holy Spirit is trying to rattle your cage and you're not listening. The more you listen, the closer you walk, the more you hear, the more you feel. You know, it really saddened me um, that we have so many people that have been hurt. And what was... What was kind of nice to see, I had asked people not to comment on other people's thoughts. And there were some people that chose to comment because they were sharing love with what they knew. You know, and, and I, I, really, I really appreciated that and respected that too. They were, sho they were showing love. They were apologizing for the poor things they experienced. And trying to let them know that not all Christians are that way. And I really, like I said, I really did appreciate that. But I wanted to eliminate any kind of commenting and commentary back and forth. Because I didn't want anybody to feel like they were under attack. I wanted them to feel the freedom of sharing how they felt. And it was pretty powerful. It was pretty powerful to me to see. It was a good gauge for us all. So if you haven't seen it, just go read some of the comments. It was really... Um, it's a good gauge for us to follow and it's a good gauge for us to base our days on and to base our actions on and to see how important our talk and actions matter and also how much we can make a difference. I don't want to, we aren't supposed to cause others to stumble. And we need to remember that. And I just wanted to share this today. It really, it really touched me in a lot of different ways this week by asking that question. And I know that that was something that God nudged me to do. And I know that there's great purpose in it. I know we can all learn from it. And that's what I'm asking. So guys, this was long, as always. But I really appreciate you joining me. And uh, we have some really important qu prayer requests. Down below is a, a very long list. Um, some very specific ones that I want to call out today, um, of course, is Martin and Kim. Martin is still in his coma. It's been over 100 days. Um, he
He had a heart attack while jogging with his daughter and has been in a coma since. His family of seven children and his wife are in the wings trying to go about their day to day and still function in, in this struggle. Um, God is certainly testing their faith, um, but miracles are happening. And I would like that you just keep praying for their miracle because uh, Kim is a very, um, very, very faithful woman and she is seeking her miracle and I know that she will get it. Um, a friend of mine, Cheryl, asked for prayers and I'm um, just going to ask that you pray for her with a health situation. Um, Charles was another one that had a health situation going on and I would just like you to continue to pray for him uh, to improve on his health and Mona and Ken are having some health issues also if you could just continue to pray for them. Um, we have Shelly and her daughter that you can continue to pray for for healing and uh, for full recovery and our friend Diana also needs prayer right now. Um, she is in a situation and if you could just pray for her steadfast on a daily basis right now, um, that would be really great. Um, God is working some miracles there. We are seeing the miracles from our prayers, so if you could pray for, for her, that would be fantastic. Also, um, please keep Chad in your prayers. He could also use continuous prayers. He is walking out a very hard journey and uh, Kelly and Tammy are working on their homesteads and the weather is fighting and they've got a lot to do and sometimes not enough hands, so just pray for them. And um, my one friend's boys um, need some prayers for their schooling um, and her for strength um, in the process of, of helping her boys succeed. Uh, so if you could just uh, specifically pray for them and of course my friend Pat Kenny um, who is dealing with some heart issues and dealing with uh, cancer and my friend Stacy that is also uh, on a very uh, incredible spiritual walk and could always use our prayers and then if you could just keep us in prayer that God will show his will to us and uh, open the necessary doors and help us to find a uh, buyer for our home so I'm going to pray for us all and then we can uh, go about our days. So I thank you guys so much for joining me today. Um, this has been, as always, a really powerful conversation and touching on some really important things. So Papa, I just thank you for your presence here today. I thank you for filling our hearts with the Holy Spirit and for forgiving all of our sins and just uh, enabling us to feel your presence, to feel your nudges, to be guided by you, to make the right choices in our daily walk. And the beautiful thing is that you do offer us a new beginning every day. We are all going to fail. None of us are perfect, but we thank you for offering us that and for dying on the cross for our sins and enabling us to be overcome by the Holy Spirit, that we are guided from both right and, and into the, I'm sorry, into the right and away from the wrong. And I just ask that you show yourselves to those that are watching and to those that are watching the replay. And for those that have never felt your presence, that you make it clear and that you help them to understand that amazing feeling. And just call us out, Lord. You know, we need to become strong in our faith. We need to be grounded. We need to firmly plant our feet. And we need to be a light and a guide to others. But the best way we can do that is by believing in you strongly and to walk that out. And when we make that mistake, to be bold enough to own it and to apologize where necessary or to make something right. By doing so, that you know, strengthens not only our resolve and our integrity, but also our faith. And it also enables others that are watching to see how it's walked out. You know, we have to do that on a regular basis, all of us. And it's just the right thing we're supposed to do. We are supposed to walk the way Jesus walked. And it's not an easy task. And being a believer in Christ and a Christian is not an easy task because when we plant our feet and stand firm for you, 
we hit adversity and you know what that is a really amazing place of growth and although it may be scary for many as you walk that out and as you plant your feet and as you put your armor on daily it becomes a really amazing place of comfort and strength knowing that um, there's a lot of power in it and I just encourage you all to seek him and I just thank you Papa for what you're gonna do in each of our lives and how you're gonna use each of us for your glory and I just thank you greatly for what you're gonna do for each of us and for all those that are on our prayer list I just thank you for what you're gonna do in their lives and the miracles you're going to work and I, I I just can't thank you enough for the many blessings that you've given us and so many others. And I, I ask all of this in your holy and precious name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, guys. Thank you so much for taking time with me today. Thank you for sharing your thoughts, your input, for being a light to others, for being willing to step it up. I know, I know many of you are. I know many of you are walking things out. I know many of you are a light already. And if we can, you know, become contagious, imagine how that will look over time. So just take those small baby steps regardless if it's working on your food supply or whether it's working on nurturing the life of another. So guys, thank you so much for being a part of our community. I am actually off this afternoon to take Miss Mona to my one of my favorite places and spend a little time with her. So I'm very excited for that and I wish you guys all a very awesome afternoon and may God be a great part of that and may he bless you. I know he will. So guys, have a great day. I will see you next week. God bless.